Our first scripture reading this morning as we think more about prayers worth saying is from Isaiah, his call and vision. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And then from the Gospel, 14th chapter of Matthew, we pick up the story right after Jesus has heard of the death of John the Baptist. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. All ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides the women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we stand before your word, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This week we continue with our series on prayers worth saying. So far we have reflected on the prayer help and thanks as we celebrate the ministry of the United Methodist Women today, it's only appropriate that our prayer for this week is, Use Me. A prayer that helps us focus on getting involved for Christ. As you've heard, the United Methodist Women is one of our church organizations that is focused on ways to get people involved beyond the doors of the church. And the word we use for getting involved is mission. You heard me talk to the kids about mission. Mary Ann just gave us a good image of mission through the lens of the United Methodist Women. Mission is more than signing up to go to Honduras or Nicaragua. Mission is more than working on the Habitat House once a month. Mission is more than cooking and serving at Safe Harbor. All of these things are mission, but mission is more 
than just those actions. Mission's not an event. It is a process. It is a way of life. It is a conscious decision to act in a way that we believe Christ is calling us to act. It's taking an active part in the ministry and work of Jesus here and now. Which is all well and good, but what does that have to do with prayers worth saying? Everything, every act, every thought, begins somewhere. Individual commitment to mission begins with prayer. Mission begins with a prayer worth saying. Use me. How many of you, by show of hands, remember the TV show, Welcome Back, Cotter? Okay, good. I'm talking to my crowd here. For those of you who are too young, it was the story of a Brooklyn teacher with a classroom full of very unique individuals each with their own personality, their own quirks. One of the most memorable characters was Arnold Horshack. Remember Arnold Horshack? And one of Arnold's endearing qualities was his eagerness to always volunteer. He always had something to say. And when he was ready to say something, he remembered that he'd been taught, you raise your hand, but it was, oh, 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 oh. Remember Arnold? Yeah. When we pray, use me, usually we're not praying quite like Arnold Horshack, at least not out loud. I think we're actually much more reserved. Instead of, oh, 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 use me, use me, we're often a little quieter. Well, Lord, here I am, and if you really have to, you can use me. But if you don't, it's okay too. <laughs> we often pray as if mission, both at home and far away, is something nice to do, but if we don't get involved, it's okay. God will find someone. God, of course, always does find someone for the work that needs to be done. God is constantly calling people to be involved in the ministry in the world. Sometimes God's call comes unexpectedly. Moses was not expecting to hear from God. Peter, James, and John saw Jesus walking on the beach, but they weren't jumping up and down going, oh, take me, take me, take me. All of these were busy with their everyday lives when the call came from God. In fact, Moses did something very unusual. Moses told God to go find somebody else. Eventually, God was able to persuade him to serve alongside Aaron and Miriam. Other times, people do step forward when they're called. Peter, James, John were all cooperative, following Jesus as soon as he said, follow me. We read today of Isaiah's vision, the vision of the heavenly throne room of God. He was so moved with this vision that when he heard the voice of God asking, who shall I send? Isaiah was there. Isaiah was Arnold Horshack. Ooh, ooh, send me, send me. Unlike Moses, Isaiah was eager to do whatever it was that God needed, even though he wasn't specifically called by name. As people of God, we know in our heads that we are supposed to be engaged in what God needs us to do. We know that the stories in the Bible are examples of how we need to be ready to serve when we are called. Not if, but when we are called. But sometimes we're a little less than eager. We lean a little more to the Moses side than to the Isaiah side. Even the disciples were sometimes less than eager to get involved in ministry. 
In the story from Matthew today, the disciples were not standing there eagerly volunteering to serve those that they saw were hungry. They knew something needed to be done, but they wanted Jesus to do it. I mean, Jesus was right there. They had seen him do miraculous things before. They didn't think they had the resources to do what seemed necessary. So they wanted to let Jesus do it all. I think sometimes we feel like that. We think Jesus needs to be doing it all. We see the big things and the small things that need work in the world. We see war and poverty and hunger and homelessness and loneliness and brokenness. We see it on the news from around the world and from right in our own community. And we ask, God, why don't you do something about all this suffering in the world? It is a legitimate question. Like the disciples, we see the need, and we feel helpless. We feel inadequate. But when we ask why God isn't doing something, God's answer is, I have done something. I sent you. Jesus told the disciples, you give them something to eat. God tells us, go make a difference in the world. That is the foundation for mission. That is the call to work in the name of Christ, wherever we happen to be. That is the call of God in this world. And God is looking for people who are ready to serve, people who are actively and eagerly praying, use me. We know that we want mission and service to be our daily lifestyle, but it's kind of easy to get on the back burner sometimes. A big mission trip, something that we have to plan for, pack for, save for, that's easy to get excited about. It's easy to pray eagerly, use me while I am in Honduras or Nicaragua or South Carolina. But the daily practice of eagerly praying, use me today, seems to slip past us sometimes. We aren't always focused on the possibilities that God has for us, the need that God has for us to fill. And when we aren't eagerly praying, use me, we're not in tune with God's call for us. And when God asks, who shall I send? We don't answer because we weren't listening. And in order to listen, we have to pray, but not just pray. Pray with enthusiasm and eagerness. Our prayer, use me, needs to have a strong edge of eagerness. It doesn't end in a period. It's not use me. It ends in an exclamation point. Use me. As I was thinking about this sermon this week, I was driving down the street, and I heard a song by John Fogarty come on the radio. John Fogarty, anybody remember? All right, I'm still with you, all right. It seemed to embody that sense of eagerness that I think we need to have. Rusty, would you play that for us? And you can sing along if you remember.
I won't play the whole thing. You have to look it up. But I saw you. Some of you are tapping your feet. Some of you are smiling. A few of you are singing along. You remember the song. Do you have that same feeling when you offer your prayers of use me, put me in, coach? As I was contemplating the sermon this week, I was watching preseason football. I like preseason football because it's very different than the rest of the season. There are certain things that are different than during the regular season. And one of the things that I noticed this week is that when they show the sidelines, there's nobody sitting down unless they're injured. Nobody is sitting down. They're all crowded along the sidelines. They're not just there to cheer on their teammates. They are there to catch the eye of the coaching staff. Many of them know that they are fighting for their job. There are 90 players on the preseason roster in August, but by the time the season begins in September, only 53 can remain. Sitting on the bench with the attitude of, well, I'm here, I'm willing to play, the coach will call if he needs me. It's not going to get anybody a spot on the team. Our prayer, our communication with God is one way we let our coach, our God, know that we are fully part of this team. We aren't sitting on the sidelines, passively available if God would happen to need us at any time. We are spiritually in full uniform. We're there helmet in hand, on the edge, leaning out, ready to get in the game. Our daily prayer needs to be, use me, with an exclamation point, or two, or three. It opens our hearts and our minds to the opportunities for mission that are right in front of us. It opens us to the availability to serve God in so many places at so many times. It lets God know we are here. We are eager to serve. Listen. Can you hear God's voice? Can you hear the question? Who shall I send? And who will go for me? It's our turn. To say, oh, 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 send me, send me, put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Amen.